Hi everybody, Jeremy here from Video to Studio and today I'm going to show you how to get the most out of all list and bullet point pack. So if you're ready, let's check it out. Alright, so quickly first how to install the pack. Basically you get a zip file, just double click on it to unzip it. Then you get a folder. In the folder you have a couple of things. You have the license, you have the instructions, the DRFX file and the font. Please make sure to install the font provided, otherwise the title would not work and you will get a black screen. Just double click on the font to install all of them or just drag them into your font folder. Then you can go to your DRFX file and just double click on it to start the installation process. It will prompt open DaVinci Resolve and you will get this window that asks you if you want to install, click install and then you can open a new project. Once in DaVinci Resolve to get access to your title, you can simply go to Effect, Titles, then you have Video Editor Studio. You can just scroll down to List and Bullet Point. And then here you'll have four subcategories with Bullet Point, List, Sidebars, and Typography. The bullet points are individual bullet points, kind of like lower third. You can stack a bunch of them and start creating a list, or you can simply use them as lower third. Then we have List that have different functionality that we're going to see together in a second. But notably, the cool functionality that we added on this one is that you can basically choose to have each bullet point entering one by one at whatever time you want in your timeline. Then we have the sidebar that you can use to basically help create separation between your background and your bullet point. So here you have different possibilities. And then the last category, typography, are some text that you can use with uh, those sidebar to create, for example, a slideshow or introducing section of a video. So now let me show you how they work and create some examples together. Let's start with the bullet points. So here I'm going to start with bullet point number one and drag that in my timeline. Here I'm just going to close my media pool and extend my inspector so we can see a bit more what we're doing. So first off, our titles have been creating using anim curves, meaning they will work with any frame rate and that you can just extend them as long as you want and you will retain the animation in and the animation out. Then for all of them, you can choose the animation length. So right now it's one second, but you could switch that for two seconds, three seconds, four seconds, up to five seconds. So right now the animation is one second. What if we just change that for three seconds? And as you can see, the animation takes three seconds to be complete. For any parameter, you can just double click on it to reset it to the default values. And also you can choose between different animation options. So right now it's zoom in, but for example, we could choose to have it coming from the left. So here pan left, and now we have a different kind of animation. We could also here switch and have it come from the bottom. And here we go, we just done that in few click. It's the exact same thing here in animation out. You can select whichever animation you'd like. Depending on your composition layout, you can also choose to have it on the left side or on the right side. You'll have the usual size and position where you can just adjust the overall position of the title as well as the size. And then most titles share a similar parameter, which are the shadow drop down where you can control the drop shadow. You have the glow where you can control the glow. You have the perspective where you can control basically the perspective on the X, the Y and the Z axis. And we have the custom background. If you want to see more detail about those, I will link to another video in the description below. Now, everything that I just show you is pretty much commonly shared with all those titles. The only difference then gonna come with a few drop down here, like the bullet point or the text that might have different functionality within them. For example, this bullet point got a bunch of possibility. Here you can choose the bullet shape. So here we have a square, for example, we could switch for circle or none. You can then choose also what is inside that shape. So here we have a star, but you have a bunch of different possibility like a circle, a square, an arrow, some minus, plus, cross, check. And also you can just import a custom shape and that also serve as none if you don't want to add anything. If you want to add a custom shape, you can simply go to custom shape and then here broad and then here import the PNG icon, for example. Then we can just adjust the size and reduce it so it fits into our box, like so. There is a lot of different combination. For example, here, if you untick solid, you will get only the outline of the box and then you could select a checkbox, for example, and here change the color to green and now you will have a checkbox bullet point. Then the text background is adjusting automatically. Here, if we write more text, as you can see, it will just fit directly behind the text. And you can add as many lines as you want. 
Now, most bullet points share similar functionality, but some have some unique feature. For example, here, bullet point number nine, because the focus was only on the checkbox and not like all the other possibility that we've added with the first one, we've been able to add some feature for the checkbox. So here you can drop some keyframe on the check, cross or empty, meaning that you can start with your box being empty and then wherever you want. So here, for example, around there, I can switch that box to go from empty to check by simply dropping a keyframe here on empty, then moving one frame forward with my arrow key and then dropping a keyframe on check. And now if we play it, as you can see, we have that simple animation going from empty to check. You can then use and stack those bullet points to create list. So here, for example, I could just adjust the size and position of this one, bringing it a bit more to the top. Then I could hold option or alt on my keyboard and then just drag that title to duplicate it on the second track. And then now I can adjust the position to have it right below the first one. And so here we could call this one point number one. And then the one above we can call it point number two. And that way you can create your own custom list very easily with a lot of flexibility. Now the second option, if you want to do something like this and you have a lot of point, would be to use the list title. So let's just drag one in our timeline right now. Let's extend it to about 20 seconds. You'll find the usual parameter that we described earlier, but we have a few other functionality, like for example here, a point count. So right now we have up to nine point, but we could reduce that to four, for example. Sometimes the viewer will not update right away, so just move your cursor and everything will just disappear. You can also adjust the spacing between the point very easily. And the main feature of this title is here in the point animation, either being individual or by group. So here when the point animation is by group, everything is coming to screen at once. But if we want to bring each of those points individually, we're gonna use the individual option. But before that, for ease of use, I want to make sure that I'm happy with my design, that I've imported all my value properly, uh, and that I'm fine, for example, here for those bullet points to be square rather than circle or another shape. You will always be able to go back and make some modification if you have to, but because we're gonna make cuts, it's just easier if you've made all those modifications before making the cuts. So right now, for example, I'm just gonna go to my bullet point style. I'm gonna switch it for circle, and here I'm gonna switch the color to red maybe and reduce the size of the split point a little bit. Then here, I want to go to my header and I want to have a background. So here I'm gonna activate the text background opacity up to one. And here I'm just gonna create some round corner to match the fact that we have dot. I'm gonna extend a bit the vertical because I want to give it some space and same a bit here on the horizontal. Now I'm happy with this. Now let's just bring the points individually. Let's close header text. The first thing I want to make sure is that here I have the animation out being off. Then we're gonna switch the point animation to individual. And we're simply gonna make the cut wherever we want the point to come into frame. So here, for example, I want my point to come into frame every five seconds. So I'm gonna go to five seconds, make a cut, then go to 10 seconds, make a cut, and then go to 15 seconds and make a cut. Now I'm gonna go to bullet point one and here instead of having four point, I'm gonna do only one point. Then I'm gonna go to point two and instead of having four, I'm gonna having two, then three, same thing. I'm gonna select three and then four, I'm just gonna leave at four. Now because fourth is my last one and I want to have an animation out, this time I'm gonna go to group. So the animation is not affecting only one point but affecting the entire composition and then I'm gonna select animation out as on. Because there is a lot of thing going on on screen and we're using anim curve, as you can see now we're playing at some drop frame. So you might need to render the cache in order to get a real time playback. To do that, you can simply go over to playback here, run the cache, switch to users. And as you can see, you have this bar popping up that's gonna switch from red to blue. And whenever it's fully blue, you will get real time playback. Another quick tip is simply to go right here and here select show all video frame. It will force your composition to play frame by frame until the cache are rendered. Now I've just waited a few seconds for my title to cash in, so that bar is now blue, and now we can just play it. As you can see, we have the first bullet point coming into frame, then at the second five, we have the second one coming into frame, then at, se at the second 10, we have the third one coming into frame, and then we have the final one coming into frame. Then here, just one quick thing that I realized, because I have a four point, I need actually to have 
five title uh, in order to have an animation out. So here I need to just create a fifth one. And so my first one gonna still be individual, fourth and animation off. And then just the fifth one gonna be the one with group and this time animation out on. And as you can see now, my red bar became blue. So that means that we cache in our titles and now we're able to play them at real time playback. We have the first bullet point coming into frame. Then at second five, we have the second one coming into frame, so on and so forth with like the third one until the fourth one. And then we have the animation out that's just gonna remove all the titles together. Now, right now we've been doing that on a black screen, but what if we have some footage below it and we want to create more separation where well, that's when the sidebar come into play. So here I'm just gonna select everything we've done and I'm just gonna drag that onto track number three. Then on track number one, I'm simply gonna bring here some footage, bring that in here, just copy and paste it to extend it until the end of our composition. And now if we play it, as you can see, it's nice, but it doesn't pop uh, as much because here we have some stuff on the screen so it's harder to read. We could make that pop a lot more by bringing here one of the sidebars so here I'm gonna select sidebar number two and I'm gonna put it on track two so basically below my titles but above my footage and then I can just extend that to the entire duration here of my bullet point list. Then here it's just go wherever everything is on screen so I can see what I'm doing. Select my sidebar and then here increase the scale. And now we've created a lot more separation between the footage and the title. We can still actually see what's happening on screen. Right now it's white on white, but you could choose to change the color of that background. So here we could switch it to black, for example. We could reduce the opacity or increase the opacity to have a complete solid. Right now I'm just gonna decrease it by a lot. You have multiple options with the sidebar. So right now you have those ones that are just taking one part of the screen. But for example, we have this one, sidebar or seven, that help you basically creating a transition from the footage to a solid background. So here, if I were to just switch that sidebar control and add the level to one and I have just a solid background and switch that color, for example, for a gray, as you can see, we have it coming on screen and here switching basically from the footage to our bullet point and serving as a transition. You have a lot of flexibility. For example, you can choose from which side you want it to come. So here you have up, down, right and left to choose from. They all serve different purpose and can help you achieve something specific depending on your project. So for example, here, if I'm bringing sidebar six, this one will be ideal to be used with individual bullet points. So you can then just bring the bullet point that you want on track number two. Then here, reduce the overall size of that bullet point and then just place them within that frame. Another good combination is the sidebar and the typography. So here, if I take again, sidebar number seven, right there, bring some footage below it and bring, for example, typography seven on track number three, We've now created a title card that can be used to announce a section of a video, for example, and coming out of screen like so. You can even use that as a transition here if you make it solid by going here to sidebar control, bringing the level to one. Here we could switch the color for a gradient, for example. I'm gonna go with purple and red. And now if I have two shots, I'm bringing the second one right after it and I'd serve as a transition between the two sections. You have your title card coming in, then it's just transitioning between another shot, and then you can just move on with your video. Most of those typography titles have a loader, so right now, by default, we put the logo of DaVinci Resolve, but you can always go here to image and add whatever logo you want. So for example, here, we could just replace it with Video Editor Studio logo, or adding any other media you wish to add. And that's pretty much it. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know in the comment if you have any question. Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next one. Bye. Speed up your workflow and create better videos using the pack available on our website, including titles, transition, and templates built only for DaVinci Resolve. Get started today by downloading our free starter pack that contains over 150 elements. Link in the description below or at videoeditorstudio.com.